So I first got uh, interested in music when I was pretty young. My grandmother used to sing a lot, and she's a Colombian woman, so she would always sing in Spanish. And every time we would go visit her, um, there was a old uh, classical guitar sitting in the corner. So I would pick it up and mess around with it. And, uh, I just always thought that was really fun. And as I got older, um, about when I was 13, she gave me the guitar as a gift and it was a righty and I played lefty. So I strung it the other way around and um, uh, started taking a couple guitar lessons here and there, but I would just kind of mess around with it. You know, after that, it was just like make bands. So I would just form bands like a metal band, a punk band, a acoustic weirdo band, and just kind of always have been writing music and engaging in it. When I was kind of conceptualizing music, I always had some kind of aesthetic attached to it. When I was in middle school, I had like a joke band and we drew up like what the album artwork would look like and what some of the characters were before we even formally wrote a whole lot of the music. Like I wrote a theme song for an idea for a cartoon that I had. When I actually started practicing playing an instrument a lot um, is when I started to feel compelled to start actually writing songs that had some like sustenance to them and then you know when I started getting a little bit more into like existentialism and, and became a young adult I really started getting into the idea of, uh, of writing songs with lyrics and poetry and kind of everything around that room. I feel compelled all the time to be working on something. Um, it's kind of like you know, a lot of people find solace in like leisurely time or like consuming media or playing a game or something like that. I find a lot of solace in taking nothing and creating something. And it, it's not a, it's not even about the end that I come to. It's it's the it's the means is the end. So the work is what I strive to do. And it's just every now and then, now more often than not, I have something that I finished. But once I finish something, it's like, what's next? I feel so at, at calm and at peace when I have a project driving me. Um, it quiets all of the uh, anxieties that kind of day-to-day -day life uh, uh, kind of provides this day and age. Whenever I'm really working on something, I'm in that point of, of Zen where I'm mindful and I'm present and like I can pause for a moment and look up and all of a sudden I notice how beautiful the leaves are on the trees or how the sun is coming through the clouds and then I go back to it and I'm just there. Well, you know, it all just kind of occurred. So like, you know, I started getting into luthery, you know, building of instruments and modification of instruments because I play lefty and there's a whole lot of right-handed guitars and it was hard for me to find left-handed guitars. So I would have to learn how to flip them around and work correctly because there's a lot of nuances associated with it than just like switching the strings around. So like that led me into oh so you can you can change things to the instrument to suit what what you want the tool to be used for. So then I started looking into oh this you can modify pickups. You can modify all types of things that kind of work for you. And then it was like, okay, I'm really into this. This goes hand in hand with art and music together. 
So I kept pursuing that concept and I moved to Colorado and it's the world of acoustic instruments. So it's like, okay, I want to learn how to work on acoustic instruments because that sounds really fun. And it turned out great. And then uh, it was just continuously step after step after step. There was always something, an another thing to go to, another thing to try. So eventually I got fairly proficient at working on and building instruments through apprenticeships with Michael Bashkin, a uh, school in Denver with Edward Dick, you know, my time in Florida with, with one of my friends who was an experienced uh, builder and mod guy. And it was like, okay, you know, I don't want a regular job. I don't want to work for anyone. If you are asking for something from the community, which is support, um, in order to be successful, you must first give back. So we use our shop as a platform in order to uh, give people a voice or, you know, we had a, a kid's recital here just the other day. Um, and a source of inspiration. So people are always welcome to come and engage with the space and we do a video series. So, you know, that directly benefits the bands coming through looking for something to do and content to uh, put out. And it benefits us because we are engaging in a, a greater musical community. Um, you know, there's environmental implications that comes with being a woodworker, so you have to also engage in sustainable practices, getting creative about where your wood sources are coming from, uh, uh, the chemicals that you're using, everything, So, because that directly affects the community around you. The community is just a big ecosystem of humans and the world around it, so you provide inspiration and you provide joy and you get that directly reciprocated. So I guess my role as a business owner in the community is just to be a respectable contributing member of that community as well as someone who creates a product. So when it comes to, you know, being pushed to progress and compelled to learn more and more creatively. Um, it just like goes to suit that I decided to be an apprentice for Michael Bashkin, go to a school in Denver with Edward Dick, look more and more deeply into ways in which I could grow as a luthier. And then eventually I got the opportunity to have my own business and you know, now I, I'm in the midst of my life's work. So now I, I, it's, it's my duty to grow and it's my duty to progress. Um, because I, I'm just compelled to do it regardless. It, it, it doesn't matter what medium that manifest as, but I'm gonna keep growing and I'm gonna keep working and I'm gonna keep engaging. So with all this being said, it's really important for everyone to know that I could not be doing this alone. It takes a whole team of people. Matt, Caitlin, Tobias, BJ, Gemma, the Kinney family, all of us caring about this, this same thing to be successful and all of us to be creative. We're inspired by each other. We are growing together. Sweet, perfect. Cool.
Thanks for watching episode one of the Creator's Spotlight, where we highlight unique small businesses and entrepreneurs making an impact. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time.